new challenge. Every seems with every cycle of the economy getting bad, we see more children. Well, why am I telling you all this? It really goes back to that moment on my knees where I found my purpose and my passion. People say, how do you find it? It found me. My purpose and my passion intersected on my knees that morning with that eight-year-old child. But I believe that that is what I was supposed to be doing. That was the work that I was supposed to be doing. And so today, I just come and tell you that, that because you have chosen this work, that just remember that you have a chance to touch lives, that you have a chance to invest in lives. Maybe not an eight-year-old child who's been abandoned, but maybe a 20-year-old who just doesn't know what to do. Maybe it is someone who has lost their way, Maybe it's somebody who is doing exceptionally well, but still needs to be encouraged. Whatever the situation is, more than anything else, I've come to say thank you. Because you didn't have to do it. You didn't have to do it. But you've done it. You continue to do it day in and day out. And so I thank you. I'm going to end by telling you my grandmother's favorite song when I was growing up. It was, walk together, children. Don't you get weary. Run on and see what the end will be. I and mean, that's really it. And I say, walk together. I'm going to paraphrase it, my brothers and sisters. And I say, brothers and sisters, without regard to race or religion or culture. Because we really are all brothers and sisters in the important work of uplifting and educating people. And so I say, walk together, my brothers and sisters, and don't you get weary. I mean, I know there's a kid who comes into your office, sees you in the hall, plucks your last nerve. Okay, come on now, y'all gotta be honest about it. You know what happens. You know it's like if they come back in here, one, if they stop me on my way to my car on a Friday afternoon, when it's pouring down rain, I'm trying to get home. If they stop me one more time, and one more, one more, one more time, and ask me that same question that I've answered five times already, and they still come up and run after me, Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones, and we know it's after hours. And then they're going to hold me up for another 45 minutes telling me all the other problems that they got. Not to mention their cousin's problem. <laughs> you know it's true. You know I'm telling the truth. Because I know. Because <laughs> I've done it. <laughs> Mr. Jones, let me just ask you one more thing. Because they didn't come and do what they were supposed to do. They didn't do what they were supposed to do. But you know what? For all we know, that student's mother is dying of cancer. Didn't get to come by to fill out the paperwork they should have done. Didn't do what they were supposed to do. Because the mother that they love is terminally ill. Or they're working a job just so they can stay in school and work until 2 a.m. last night. And so we have to deal with people when we find them. And that interaction, the difference you make, can not only change them, but can change generations in